Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're really excited to be testing the water quality of our recirculating shower. Stay tuned to see what the results are. We're Tim and Katie, and we designed and built a recirculating shower in our van in order to save weight and water while on the road. Say recirculating shower one more time. For your host. <laughs> this week, we tested the water quality to determine if our filtration system is still effective after multiple showers. It's really cloudy. <laughs> On the fly. <laughs> so we used one liter bottles of um, purified water, just dumped the water out, and we're really careful to not touch the lip, so it was an aseptic collection we'll be doing. So first of all, we're going to start with the tap water only. So we'll fill up using regular tap water, we'll get that tested, and that'll serve as our kind of control. Okay, then we are going to move on to flushing the water through the loop, and then taking a sample from there. That way we can see if there's any bacteria or stuff built up in the loop. It can be accounted for on the loop only experiment. Sample. Okay, and then the other ones are from our showers. So we have shower after showering once, three times, six times, and nine times. So after we take a shower, we will just open up the tap slowly, the cap slowly, hold it under the um, shower head and fill it up for the full liter and we will do that for each of them within 24 hours our samples will be tested so they won't be sitting there and growing extra bacteria we're really thankful that a friend of mine who works at a water treatment plant offered to do the testing for us so we have a handful of tests that we want to run each of these samples through and then we can compare at the end. The tests are orthophosphate, which is gonna help tell us how well the carbon filter is working and if there are high levels of phosphate, it could lead to something like algae or plant growth. Ammonia, our system doesn't actually filter out ammonia, so we're curious to see if the levels change. High levels of ammonia would lead to an irritant for the eyes and nose and the main source would be urine so we better not be seeing any of that. Total suspended solids, which is a measure of the particulate or sediment in the water. This will tell us if our sediment filter is working well to remove it. It's really important in our system because if the sediment becomes too high, it'll make the water cloudy and then our UV light filter won't work as well. E. coli, which is a measure of bacteria in the water and it should tell us how well our UV light is working. And lastly, nitrogen. We actually don't have a filter that can remove nitrates, but if you ingest water with high levels of nitrates, it can make people sick, so we should check it out. So first things first in our study is we need to figure out exactly how much water goes through the shower loop. We continue to say it's around three and a half gallons, but that's actually just an estimate. So we're gonna fill up the loop and then drain it into a five gallon bucket and then measure it out, figure exactly how much we have because we wanna know how much we're diluting the water in the loop every time we take a sample and then replace that sample. And in position, so we will drain into the bucket. So to ensure that we actually get all the water out of the loop, we're gonna drain it using the pump as we normally do, and then I'm gonna grab the compressor, hook it up to the valve, and blow out the rest of the lines. It's sounding pretty dry, so most of the water should be out by now. Scoot it up here, it's, it's higher up here. Oh. Pretty and smart. <laughs> Think of that though, this is how much water you need to take an unlimited length of the shower. How exciting. Where do you want it? Uh, just on the grass here is great. You in dirt. <laughs> In order to be as accurate as possible, I am using a four cup measuring cup. And we'll see how many scoops it takes to get this out. Eleven point seven seven. Don't don't cut the corners. Eleven point seven seven liters. So without further ado, let's start with the tap water only. Great. Okay. Don't touch the lip. We need an aseptic environment with no contaminants. <laughs> no contaminants. I'm done. Contaminants. 
Okay, now I'm going to get one from the shower loop. So this has just gone through the loop, but we have not showered in it as of yet. Alright, time for Timmy to shower. Shower number one. Happy showering! Alright guys, shower number one is done, so it's time to get the next sample. Leaving the comforts of my home to a shower in the van. Things we do for science, right? Just like that, shower number two done. You're up, bucko. Alright, so shower number three is done. We're gonna take a quick water sample here and run it over to our buddy Drew's and we'll get the water tested tomorrow. A little bit cloudy. Would you drink it? No. No? But what if you're in the desert? It's bubbly, like. Yeah, the water from the whole yeah, oh. so kind of slap it a little See, bit. Yeah, you could drink that. Okay, this is shower number four. Shower number five. All right, this is shower number six. We are gonna shower, grab the sample, and get it over to Drew. All right, guys, shower number seven. Guys, this is the ninth and final shower, so I'm gonna jump in the shower, get the final sample, and then we'll take it tomorrow to get it tested. I'm feeling a little bit like a guinea pig here, kind of hoping I don't break out in a rash or pink eye, but so far we've been okay, so we'll see tomorrow what the testing comes out like. Shower number nine. Good morning, guys. Today we are taking our last sample of shower number nine to Drew. Pretty crazy to think that we took nine showers in the same three gallons of water. So I'm really excited to see those results. I thought yesterday some of this was just bubbles. It's really cloudy. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't shower in this. That's us. Alright, I'll let you in. Thanks, boss. Welcome. Nice. Well, Smells like science. Yes. Super thankful that Drew did the test for us and was willing to show us around the lab there. It was really cool to see everything broken down, um, how he does specific testing and the processes. So we have the data for everything except the fecal coliforms. He will let us know in 24 hours, or the test is done in 24 hours, so we'll hear tomorrow. And then we'll put the graphs together and... We'll do a little analysis here. See how it goes. All right, we're back in the van and Katie had a chance to graph the data for us. We're super excited to share what we found. The results are really encouraging. So we'll dive into each one that we analyzed step by step. So this is how we oriented all of our graphs and all of our data. So let me just get you orientated here. So we have on the bottom axis here, the x-axis, we have all of our shower 
samples. So we start with tap water, loop water, shower one, three, six, and nine. So that's going to be consistent throughout all of our graphs. And on the y-axis here, we have the variable that we are analyzing. Um, in the brackets, there will be units if that's relevant. All right. So on this one, we have pH. As you guys can see, the pH is quite high. Um, and at the end of actually collecting all of our samples, we realized that doesn't really look right. So we researched a little deeper and found that the pH in our region of the tap water that we actually filled up from, it's 8.1, or sorry, 8.01. So we use that as equivalent to our tap water and then minus the 2.6 pH, which is the difference, and applied that all the way down to all of our samples. So essentially we started at 8.01, and as you can see with each shower, we slowly started um, reducing the pH, becoming more acidic environment, um, and ended at pH of 7.2 in shower nine. You might be wondering why we just decided to um, reduce the pH by 2.6 six and didn't think much else of it. We actually looked into it further and found that hard water, which we have at home, um, as it sits in a container or out of the system, it starts becoming more and more basic with time. Um, so all of our samples sat for about 12 hours before being tested. So we think that that can account for some of that pH increase. Next we have conductivity, which is a measure of dissolved solids in the water. And you can see it's a fairly steady, gradual increase um, from the loop only all the way up to shower nine. So we're pretty happy with it. We think of it as a measure of the dissolved solids that haven't been able to be filtered out. Um, so in the level of cloudiness in the water. So that could be from the accumulation of soap in the system. Next, we have total suspended solids, which refers to the amount of sediment in the water. Um, this is a really important test for us because it really tells us how well our sediment filter is working. So you can see that the, as soon as we did the loop only, it did start to get a little bit dirtier. And then with each subsequent shower, it really went up. We're curious though, why at six showers, did it kind of start to plateau and not get as dirty as it was getting before? We wondered if maybe that was because the five micron filter was allowing some sediment through. And once that hit a certain saturation point, then the filter was working better and it was keeping the water clean. We don't really know. Let us know in the comments if you have any suggestions, but overall, we're still happy with how clean the water is. Uh, yeah, 20 milligrams per liter, just not very much sediment. So the next measure is ammonia. Now this is a bit of a confusing one for us. So we are really open to feedback and ideas of where the contributions of ammonia can come from. We did not pee in the shower. We need to be very clear about that. Um, so from tap water up to shower nine, it's a very, steady climb um, and even when we just do the loop only the ammonia starts building up so we initially thought maybe it was because well we cleaned the system with bleach so maybe it was to do with bleach but we couldn't really find anything to confirm that either so if anyone has an idea we would love to hear from you another contributor could be sweat we don't know um, but regardless the level of 8.6 milligram per liter uh, still appears to be safe, and that's by shower number nine. Okay, so next one is orthophosphate, and this is a measure of how much phosphorus is in the system. Um, this doesn't change much at all. It starts at 0 0.01 with tap water and ends at 0 0.06. Um, there is a bit of a dip at shower three. However, it's only by 0 0.02 points. So we think it's pretty good and aren't too concerned about it. So the next one we have is nitrates, and we aren't sure... Um, if this is super important for showering. However, we wanted to make sure all of our bases were covered in case we get water in our eye or in our mouth or whatever. So once we start showering, it slowly starts climbing. However, it does not even increase a tenth. So, so no red flags happening there. So the next one we have is alkalinity. And you can see that from um, the first shower loop up to shower nine, it's just a slow gradual increase, um, but still within a very safe level of 200 milligrams per liter. Okay, so now it's the moment we've all been waiting for. How many fecal coliforms did we find? And we're happy to announce by shower number nine, there was zero. So, and same as shower six. You can see in shower three, there were three found. So let's have a chat at why shower number three showed three coliforms. So there were three coliforms in the three shower sample. 
And when we talked to our friend Drew, who did the testing for us, he had a couple different ideas um, why that might happen. Um, first, he said there was could have been contamination, um, either at this shower when I was getting the sample, or when Drew was doing the testing. He said it's a very sensitive test, and he was testing their sewage water at the same time. One consideration is, if you go swim in a lake, unless it has more than 200 coliforms, they won't mark it with a sign saying it's... Um, unsafe to use unsafe water yeah that you'll, you'll get a rash whatever so for a shower it, even if it has three coliforms in it we're not worried the next step would be okay if that was consistently happening three coliforms in the test then we would go the next step and do an e coli test and see if it's actually a, a harmful bacteria yeah i mean the biggest thing to consider though is that after that one sample it went down to zero and since yeah. that water stayed in the system it must have been a, a contamination contamination station yeah we're really happy with the results that we got with this uh, experiment. However, it's really important to realize that this wasn't a perfect experiment by any means, and there are a number of variables and areas where there could be error that, uh, that come into play. So we would love to discuss those next. Before we do, we just want to say, if you think this shower system might be a good setup for your van or tiny house, whatever you're doing, um, feel free to check out the ebook in the description below. We walked everyone through step by step kind of how we built and framed our shower and all the plumbing and all the parts you need um, we've had a really good response and thanks to everyone for the support those we've, we really hope you found it helpful but yeah if you if you like this uh the sounds of this system um hopefully these the results of the water testing are uh, reassuring for you as they are for us and uh, yeah feel free to check that out one of the confounding factors for this experiment was the fact that we had to take one liter of water out of the shower loop each time we were getting a sample. Um, that meant that we also had to replace that liter with fresh water. The entire loop holds just over three gallons of water or roughly 12 liters. So we we're almost taking 10% out of the system and then replacing it, which meant that with each test we were diluting the water slowly. There's no real way around this because we had to take water out to get sampled, so. Yeah, and we had to refill it. it to continue the loop. Yeah, okay. The next one is um, the level of dirtiness that we were when we went into the shower. So it's yeah. hard to keep that consistent. Some days you're sweatier than others. Um, the one thing we will say is that we weren't ever completely muddy or anything. We were just, you know, going to the gym, having our day-to-day -day life. Um, and in the shower, in the van, we would kind of rinse off if we were super muddy, like visibly muddy anyway, so. And then the next one would be the time between showers. So some days Tim and I would both shower, so it would be Katie showers, then Tim showers within like an hour, and then other days it would be a shower, Yeah. you know, sometimes two days apart even. So the water would be sitting in the loop for that amount of time. Yep. And that could, who knows, like with the water being stagnant, maybe it uh, promotes growth or something like that all could contribute. The last factor we thought of was uh, the temperature of the water and the environment. So um, for those of you that maybe watched the other shower video or um, bought the ebook, we set the temperature of the water at the hot water tank um, and ours is roughly 103 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but maybe if your shower is either hotter or colder, um, the study might be different for you. And then as well, maybe the temperature when the water was sitting in the van or when we were taking the samples, mm -hmm. uh, that could affect it as well. One thing we did try to stay really consistent with is, you know, roughly 8, 8.30 p.m. in the evening is when we would take the sample. We'd refrigerate it right away. Um, I would drive it over to Drew's and he'd put it in his fridge. And then first thing in the morning, he would take it and test it, um, you know, around 7 a.m. So yeah. it wasn't sitting more than, you know, what, 12 hours. Max. Yeah. So back to the temperature for a second with colder environments, you know, it can almost act as like a fridge, right? So that can slow the growth of bacteria and things like that. Whereas in warmer environments, it might promote a little bit more bacterial growth. So what does this data mean to us? Well, first and foremost, it confirms that the recirculating shower is safe to use. Secondly, it helps dictate how often we should be draining and cleaning the shower. And as we mentioned before online and in our ebook, um, we go about six showers and then we take, clean out the strainers, drain the water and replenish it with fresh water. And then roughly once a month, we take out the filters, spray them, inspect them, replace them if needed and run bleach through the system. So this helps confirm that 
we are we're on track with that assumption and we're gonna keep doing that even though if you really want you could probably get by doing nine ten showers we're really happy that we did this experiment because I personally was quite hesitant when Tim brought up the idea of um, making a recirculating shower in our van I thought it was kind of gross and even with some of the water as you can see in the earlier clips it looks a little bit cloudy however the data is showing that it's not harmful. So let us know in the comments below, what do you think about the results? And would you have one of these systems in your van? Thanks so much for watching. Again, if you're interested in a system like this, check out the ebook, the link's in the description below. Lastly, if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. We have lots more content coming out soon.